Let's do some public service announcements. Just real quick, things that you need to know. You need to know these things. Yeah. First up, uh, this is my most common fix for people. Uh, so I wanted to let people know about this because it's been a real hassle lately. Uh, so, and this hasn't changed for a little while, but people are just running into this, uh, you know, getting new hardware and getting into the systems and everything. So if you have a DJI Goggle V2, not the Goggles 2, the DJI Goggle V2, and you need to bind a Cadex Vista or an Air unit, you cannot use the latest firmware. The latest mm -hmm. firmware only works with the new goggles. DJI said, we're just putting it in the same branch and we're going to make these not work with your old hardware anymore and only work with the new hardware. It's very frustrating. Everybody thinks they're just like, oh, okay, we'll update everything to the latest. Everything will bind up. We're good to go. Mm -hmm. Just like always, that is not the case. So if you want your Vista or Air unit to work with your goggles V2, you got to go back to that 0608 firmware and you'll be all gravy. Yes, this is infuriating. In fact, uh, uh a one IFPV in the Discord is like this should be a rant. Uh, it re very well could be a rant. It's infuriating yeah. because somebody, Joe Public, buys a Vista, buys a buy, typically a bind and fly with a Vista in it is how this works. They update the firmware to the latest because of course you do with DJI you do, uh, and then it won't bind to their V2 goggles no matter what they do. Yeah. And then they don't know why. And and DJI has sort of drawn a line in the sand where they're like, this is the last firmware for the V2 goggles and the Vista. It's really weird, though, Blunty, because they're still going to support the Vista with the goggles, too. So they're clearly right. still doing firmware updates on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, they clearly decided, hey, we're only going to do this new stuff and we're going to dump the old stuff and you guys can deal with it pretty much. Yeah, you know? that's so. what they... they yeah. Uh, and that is a DJI, very DJI thing to do uh, it over is. time. It is. So, uh, there you go. If they won't mind, that's why. And uh, now you know. Yes. Uh, the next uh, the next PSA is has a, a helpful resource for people. Uh, it is the repair.wiki. And I'm going to put these links that you gave me on screen, and you can uh, tell the people what you uh, think they ought to know about them. Here, let's zoom in a little bit. What is Repair.Wiki? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so Repair.Wiki is a big, big wiki. It's for all kinds of different repair, uh, tablets, phones. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Louis Rossman, who we'll mention in a little bit, um, also has some information here. Um, but basically, this is a big place where you can get all kinds of information about your hardware. Pictures of hardware, fixes, common issues, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of great people have been doing things like adding uh, FPV hardware to this page. So if you wanted to see internals of the air unit, or maybe you wanted to know how to fix the common issues and where they happen. You can mm -hmm. see here, dead, no power. You can see where to check, where the overvoltage happens, what sections, right? Uh, mm -hmm. There's a... That regulator is what burns out, and they give you the list. Here we see the no OSD issue, and we've got a diode part number if you wanted to replace it. It shows you where they're located. All these kind of things. Um, and this is done for a variety of different hardware. Yeah. Uh, ooh, here's the HD0 page. Uh, many people out there will not be able to make use of this information because it requires fairly advanced soldering skills. But uh, nevertheless, we think you should know this stuff is out there if you are someone who might have those skills. Or, uh, frankly, let's face it, you got a dead air unit. What are you going to do? Hey, try to fix right. it. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Uh, Brian, Brian Lewis points out, Matt's tech, uh, Ian Lewis put, put a lot of information on here for FPV, and that is true. I, I knew that as well. So mm -hmm. definitely want to shout him out because he's been doing a lot of that work. So Yeah. He is a, he is a hell of a resource just in general. Um, yeah. Um, okay. We got another one. This one, we, we struggled with how to report this. So the way I usually like to approach that type of thing is the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to show the message that we got, and then we're going to try and clarify what actually. So I want you to know when you see this message, this isn't necessarily the exact full whole story. But yeah, here's we'll the message the that we got. We'll, okay. Yeah, we'll give you what happened. Basically, uh, he says, um, I have a, I'll just summarize. Basically, he says, I have a DJI Action 2 with a broken LCD, and my DJI MIMO app put in a code on the touchscreen to be connected. However, he has a broken LCD, so he doesn't have a touchscreen to put in this code. And he's saying, basically, his DJI Action 2 won't work anymore. Um, mm -hmm. He has There's no rollback firmware. Rollback firmware doesn't matter because it was the app that got updated. 
Um, and now he's kind of in this, what he would call a brick state because he can't get his thing out. He doesn't have the, it seems like he doesn't have the extra piece to attach that would yeah. maybe get you out of this, right? Because the DJ Action 2, you can buy with yeah. the extra bit that you plug in, download the SD card info, and you can also get that touchscreen yeah. um, on there to do actions on it. So the first thing we did is I pulled out my Action 2, which does not have a broken screen because it has never been used for freestyle. If you use an Action 2 for freestyle, you will immediately break the screen. That is the default state. And I, um, I actually had never bound it to this phone. So I downloaded the DJI MIMO app and I bound the camera to the MIMO app. And of course, when I did that, the MIMO app showed a, ver a validation code and asked me to hit a button, hit OK on the camera. I guess they're trying to prevent you from binding someone's camera to binding the wrong camera. Uh, and I was like, is this new? Because we we're like, did this, this guy said, oh, I just downloaded a new app and now it doesn't work. And we looked on the internet and I found a video from over a year ago of somebody binding their DJI Action 2 and it's the same. So I don't think this is new. I think it's always yeah. required you to hit a button on screen to bind it. And I'm just guessing this guy forgot or hadn't, you know, he was just, but, um, but the uh, PSA here yeah. is that if you have, if you have that broken screen on your action too, and presumably if you update that MIMO app, uh, or right. if you somehow lose binding with your MIMO app, and then you get into the situation where you need to rebind, the, the action two is going to get stuck without that extra piece to attach to, to actually click on that screen, the extra screen. Yeah. Um, to hit that button. Now, there's a couple things I want to say about this. The first is that a lot of times when a touchscreen breaks, the touch panel actually still works. So I don't remember. I think it was like the lower right. But like if you're in this situation, one thing you could do is when the app says press, press confirm on the phone, just take your, your camera and kind of go, eh, 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 eh. you never know. It could work. But I think the real workaround would be to own, and I said I said before the live stream, I was like, well, geez, Blunty, why doesn't the guy own one of these little screens here? Everybody who has a DJI Action 2 for freestyle should have one of these because your screen's going to break. But this damn thing is $169. So, right. uh, yeah, I could see why you might not have that and might be using your phone. Yeah, so, um, yeah. PSA, don't update your MIMO app or you'll have to rebind your camera. And you won't be able to do that if you don't have a screen. Probably, potentially. Uh, Steve Trick right. says this is not a new issue. It has yes, been an issue so, since the camera came out. Sure, but, but that's that why it's a it PSA. is currently an issue we've never reported, and we're letting people know. Yeah, that's right. We don't only report on timely things. We yeah. report on anything that's relevant. <laughs> uh, Steve Trick, um, he said he plugged in a computer and he was not able to access it. So maybe he was confused. Plug it in. Plug it into the computer. You can access the files without the code. That's true. But Blunty, did he say that the camera like locked up? Like the ca even if he power cycled the camera, he couldn't get it to function again. Yeah, the camera was basically stuck in this mode where it was asking him to continue on the screen, but he couldn't see the screen. That's what he's that's, suggesting. That's that's what he's saying. We haven't we weren't able to verify that. Yeah. Um. So uh, yes. Yeah, he's saying he's saying it just keeps putting up that prompt and basically stopped functioning once that prompt appeared. That seems that seems like a pretty big deal, if true. 